So welcome everybody to the Tuesday, September 12th meeting of the Conway Select Board here at the town offices. Um, the notice which I make, must make from now on is that this meeting is being recorded. Uh, so I'll move to, um, or I'll call the meeting to order. The first item approving the minutes of August 28th, we're tabling. The second item, the, the warrants, I did review those warrants. It was nice of Mike to get them to us nice early in the day so he could really go through them. I saw that the amount of deficit spending for these past two weeks is roughly 35000 And I saw that that was all for gravel and uh, uh, stainless steel things that go underneath culverts. Yeah. Culvert stuff. Um, so I'm going to vote to, I'm going to, uh, it's an accounts payable warrant in the amount of $105,366.11, a payroll warrant in the amount of $128,535.43, a payroll deduction warrant in the amount of $30,852.65. Um, so I'm, I'll move to approve those three warrants. Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Aye, it's unanimous. Um, meetings attended by select board members. I don't think any. <laughs> can't remember. I'm not from since last time. Oh, with Jan. Oh, Jan, yes, I'm sorry. I did have a meeting with um, Jan and Barony concerning the, the uh, transfer station um, forum on Thursday. So I had a, I had a very lengthy meeting. Um, the superintendent and representative from each of the four towns. So it may, many of you might or might not know that the Union 38, the superintendency union, the four elementary school districts of the four towns, um, we do not have an operating agreement. We never have had an operating agreement. And uh, so we're trying to create an operating agreement. It's complicated. And uh, it's an ongoing process. We're making progress. Um, and there's a lot of other meetings. I spoke with the lawyer about drainage issues. Um, yeah. Public comments, anybody? So the unfinished item, uh, unfinished business item, I'm going to uh, move down the list a little bit. The um, is the joint meeting of assessors with the assessors. What's going on with that? Yeah, uh, we put it on there in case it was ready. Right. It looks like it won't be ready till next Monday. Okay. So because um, because Jennifer is here with us um, and Patricia Lynch is here with us from our own Council of Aging, from Conway's Council of Aging, um, if it's okay with everybody, I'd like to move that item up. So, and the, the agenda item is discussion and vote on um, South County Senior Center Grant Partnership and a discussion of, because uh, I know Jennifer wanted to talk about this, discussion only, not a vote on South County Senior Center membership. So, um, with that, if it's okay, Jennifer, if I can turn it over to you, and um, it's nice to, sure. nice to see you. And, uh, nice to see everyone. Thank you for having me today. Um, I uh, sent an email to both Patricia and to Veronique, and Patricia's email bounced back. Um, we've been having issues with our email account here with, um, with Deerfield, so I don't know if it's an issue on my end, but it was basically blocked. It, I got a notification that it came back as marked as spam. So if uh, after hours I could get your phone number, Patricia, that would be great Certainly. to connect. Um, so the reason that I reached out was we have approximately 15 active members from Conway who regularly come to our senior center. Um, and an opportunity came up through the Executive Office of Elder Affairs for an additional grant um, to expand hybrid programming for councils on aging. 
We have applied for, South County already applied for and was awarded a grant for $100,000 for uh, digital literacy for the members um, who are part of our towns already for Deerfield, Sunderland, and Wheatley. So with the amount of seniors, older adults who come to our center from Conway, I thought it would be a great opportunity to include uh, Conway's um, COA in this discussion because I know from from my conversation before in emails that you did not receive um, any monies from this particular previous digital literacy grant. With this new opportunity, partnering together, and I emailed Veronique late, so my apologies, with the actual grant, so I hope she was able to send it to you or print it off. Yeah. But the um, there's three different components to use this grant for. And combining the two of us together would increase the potential to receive up to $200,000. Now, just because it's available doesn't mean that we have to apply for and use all of that, but it gives more opportunity. Um, the three areas for this would be hybrid programming equipment. Um, while the focus is mostly on the councils of aging receiving this hybrid programming equipment um, and i see that you already use the owl at your location um, those are items that we were looking at purchasing would be owls would be additional tablets to use for the staff uh, of each coa that offers the programming because we um, in south county we um, sometimes contract out to like Cadence Yoga, for example, does our mm -hmm. seated yoga classes. And we have a Tai Chi class that we have a separate instructor for in a Waitley location. So our goal is to do programming um, with both uh, types of in-person and hybrid online at the same time that actually brings us up to the forefront. Um, if you meet certain qualifications uh, for this grant, they kind of tear it out, if you're familiar with that process. Um, so the other thing could be if your location um, in Conway wanted to or needed to purchase a camera and a tripod, um, whether you needed to have a monitor or a screen or other types of equipment, a video conferencing smart device, like I mentioned the OWL, headphones, for example, or you know, you have a great space to do different activities on a hybrid programming, meaning, you know, maybe you're doing an arts and crafts project and you know, it's more uh, later afternoon and people don't like to drive in the evening for older adults, um, so you could get a way to do that. Uh, you could have a storage bin at your location. Maybe you're doing it mid-afternoon and it's bright in that area and you want room darkening shades. Those are different things. The other category that we could put in for is staff to manage the hybrid programming. Meaning if um, you had a third party agency you wanted to work with to teach older adults how to use their laptops at home. Maybe people are curious about doing an Excel or uh, Word programming or just Facebook for social media. So you can contract out. Um, you can contract with uh, not just third parties, but if you have interns or you have um, your part-time staff for your COA needs a few more hours, you know, this could put um, that funding into here. Category three is for programming expenses. So uh, that includes platforms, software expenses, for example, Zoom, you know, Zoom's expensive. So you can have a separate account that does this where it's not taking up any of the uh, town's particular Zoom accounts. So you could do it that way. And it also covers the presenter fees. Um, maybe you want to do an arts and craft project, getting that supply items to the individuals who want to participate. Um, so those are the three top categories. Obviously, you can read it over for more in-depth information. But it would be working together to come up with the different programming opportunities and including the older adults within Conway. Um, I would 
be responsible for writing the grant with input from um, from your COA as to what you know different projects they might be interested in. Plus, one of the things that I've done as a director has been to send out questionnaires to the community or you know interact and see what types of programming they're interested in. Many people come to our exercise classes regularly, but when they travel, they miss out on the class, so they've expressed interest in you know having a hybrid opportunity for that as well. Um, so one of the great things is, is this program um, funding is geared towards gateway communities, rural communities, which we both are rural communities. Um, so with being able to check the box for the priorities, we actually would check all five of their requirements. Sorry, I'm trying to get my other screen to come up with those. Um, there is an administrative ex expenditure portion, they like to see that less than 10% of the grant uh, grant amount, which is uh, fine. I kept our other one around, um, you know, just under the $10,000 because that includes like your staff time. So whatever time um, your staff, instead of using that from your operations budget, we would be able to fund that from our grant budget. Um, as it's built in. So whatever timing um, your staff feels that, you know, be necessary on there. So say, for example, um, one of the benefits that we could apply for would be uh, iPads. Currently, we're doing that lottery for iPads for our community, um, but we could also apply for and put that within the, the scope of this grant to say that, you know, have so many set aside for Conway residents only because they were not included in the uh, digital literacy um, grant before because they want to make sure that it's not encompassing the same thing and overlapping with the previous grants that were submitted. Um, so basically I would do all the footwork. I would get input from your COA members and obviously from uh, Veronique work with her. Um, and you get your your older adults who get the benefits. Well, I'd love to meet with you and uh, talk about this further. Great. Well, the grant application is due on September 25th. I'm looking to get it in for the 21st. They've been uh, putting these out and have a very quick turnaround time um, on the applications. So. Uh, there's, you know, different programming opportunities you could put up with or create and you don't have to break them down 100% at this point. Um, they do want quite a lot of detail, but, um, you know, I'd like to hear your thoughts on that as well. What programs you think the community would be interested in doing? Um, but, you know, I just was curious about the select board as well to see because um, this would basically make Deerfield the fiduciary for administering the funds. You would have accessibility to any of the reports um, provided to the funders because you have to report, you know, so many things. I would work with your COA to determine, um, you know, to get information on how to contact people, et cetera, with you. Yeah, I have no experience, Do you have any? No experience with uh, contracting, uh, you know, other than we have a uh, yoga instructor and a healthy bones and balance instructor. Uh, other than that... And a great foot program. Uh, a terrific foot program, yes, we do have a contract with uh, nurses. We have not ever thought of doing any other kind of programming. And so, well, so I think this is an op oh, go ahead. So what I was going to say, just to, so that you know, so this is the last select board meeting before the due date for this grant application. So that's why, yes. that's why this is being done tonight rather than after the next Mass in Motion meeting or whatever else. This came to our attention 
and it has to be dealt with. If we're going to do this, it has to be voted by the select board tonight. So. Okay. So, <laughs> okay. So, um, so, so, like, it is your, then you don't. I don't mean to put you on the hot seat, but the this no, is, it's okay. This this is like an ur- this is like an urgent thing. So to Patricia, I would like ask you: um, Is your concern just whether or not to do this, or is your con- or, or are you just more concerned about like what it is that you're going to be doing with this? I don't see how we have a use for it. It's really my first thought. Wow! I'm so surprised to hear that. So many people within our community have shared um, when I came on board that they felt so isolated during the pandemic and this is a really great opportunity to um, provide digital access to people who at home who may not get out of the house. Um, you know, So we're able to, to talk with them in real time. Uh, we would do a training with them on how to use the devices for, you know, for those in Conway. We're doing a um, we're working with Calm Computing for our particular grant, and you can choose to work with whomever you'd like for the um, for the education piece. But we're also following up with um, students either from Deerfield Academy or from uh, the the Frontier Regional High School to do one-on-one questions with older adults on how to use the system, uh, and we're following up with them by doing this digital lottery which we could implement for the you know for the amount of ipads um in your community so you would get the grant we would do a purchase order um i'm walking through that process right now and i know it's a little complicated but it's something um you know as the administrator portion of the grant that could fall under my purview with input as to how many we could you know get out to the community but um, the big thing is, is that it's a really great way for people to have that connection with not just the senior center, but with their family, their friends who may not live local, um, and to implement the hybrid programming where you're doing uh, an arts and crafts project where maybe someone, you know, during winter especially, people don't like to go out. It's icy yeah. um, a lot of the times, and with all this wonderful rain we've been getting, who knows how much snow we'll end up with, hopefully not as much. Um, well, but it's a like, great opportunity to get that connection to people so they don't feel isolated. And you're offering different activities for them, so if they're stuck at home due to you know, uh, the roads being in disrepair, we all know Conway have suffered the greatest amount of road damage with all this rain um, and it's going to be a while for people to be able to you know go about their regular activities you're missing out on a great opportunity for free money uh, free products and a great way to uh, get accessibility and connectivity to your seniors uh, the thing is we don't have a senior center or a central place mm-hmm. where people could come together we have limited use of town hall. Uh, well, I mean, I don't know. I'm at a loss to, on this issue. Well, it sounds to me like an example of a use of this funds could be because you said you're actually purchasing some some limited equipment, some iPads for people in the community that you're distributing. Is that correct? So right now, so we have a separate grant in addition to applying for this one where we uh, were awarded $100,000 where we're purchasing and lotterying off 129 iPads. Then we're going to have two iPads for use at our location as well as three MacBooks uh, for people to come in to utilize whenever they'd like to. In addition, we're also providing a digital stipend for 52 older adults. Uh, through a separate lottery Um, and that's also making sure people are screened for the affordable connectivity program um, because if they qualify for that based on their income they would only be allowed to get funds through them they wouldn't be allowed to for the grant through the restrictions of the EOEA Um, and that $30 stipend is a longer duration than our $500 cap 
um, and that's a separate grant. But this particular grant, because Conway did not receive any um, previous uh, laptops or other technology, this is something that we could build into this particular uh, grant and you know you can set up the limitations if you want it Ver like where I'm doing this one here with Deerfield Sunderland and Waitley for the 129 I'm not putting an income requirement on it but there is a cap of $500 value per household so meaning if a, a you know a, a tool a dual partners you know put in applications if both of them are selected they get to choose you know one person that way we're they're um, spreading it around equitably, um, you know, to the community. And because we have, you know, the 15 uh, residents of Conway, that's why I reached out, because I know that Veronique had asked um, previously about, you know, if we saw other grants, could I share them? And when I saw this opportunity, I thought this would be, you know, a really great idea, um, you know, just to provide that benefit to your community. Um, so, so just to be clear, we could actually, even though we didn't do the previous grant, we could actually yeah. provide iPads through this grant? Yes, because while it specifies that it really wants the tech purchases to go to the COA specifically, um, you know, like I'm going to write in here, I would like an owl for our particular exercise class, um, or even just to purchase, you know, a stand to hold an iPad if we chose to go the lower end route where you, I see you know you have an owl here already but if you um, wanted to purchase a small amount of tech based on um, I think when I look some data over you have around 600 older adults who live in your community um, am I on point with that number or is it less I think that's a little low I think we're something like 640 or 650. Well, if, it, if it's over 60 and older, it was 776. That sounds like... For your new numbers? Hmm? Because I know that they came out with the 2020 census data mm -hmm. um, because the formula fund grants, as you know, Patricia, is now $14 for older adult. And I think that funding is coming into all the COAs uh, by February. But the... Um, but basically you could take a percentage of how many older adults you have. Like I I did it 129 because it, or 131 total be based on how many people live in the three communities that I support, plus, um, you know, being able to provide digital access through funding. So I kind of split it up that way. Whereas this particular grant, you can't use it for funding uh, digital support you could potentially purchase hotspots for folks um, because there's different questions on here but they're kind of wanting to limit it down to a certain area um, that's also an outstanding but idea actually, there has not been much interest um, we had I think it was a year two years ago uh, Mass Council on Aging um, offered free iPads and I put a notice in Conway Currents about the offer and no one contacted us. Uh, there was another occasion where LifePath um, had a, uh, they were using students from DA as well as from other schools uh, to offer technical support, free technical support. And, mm -hmm. uh, Again, we got no responses from anyone in the community when I advertised that. So I, I don't know. Well, what's the well I think, um, you know, one of the things that I can say too is that just being on board doing what I'm doing, we did a mass mailing at the beginning of July and you could use some of these funds to mail it out to every older adult within your community a postcard and advertise what you're doing so you could gauge that actual interest um, because when we did our mass mailing it was through mass in motion at the time uh, to advertise what we offered for services and I received phone calls from about 20 different people who lived in the community for more than 10 years and they never knew we existed so I think you know 
there are some folks who may not always be aware of what services are available or what organizations you know are within the community so it's also an opportunity um, you know to participate that way and if you're not looking to purchase tech per se you could just base it on the pro the hybrid programming so if people already have their tech you know they could log on and partake in the classes and you know we have grant funding um, that has paid for like through life path they've extended our funding for our two main exercise classes our enhanced fitness as well as our chair yoga um you know through the end of september of 2024 or 2024 so you know we have we have that opportunity as well so and then arts and crafts so while i hear you say you're limited maybe you could set up programs at your town hall to, to do on Zoom or to do with your older adults who have that existing tech. And if you don't have the ability, that's something we, we could offer as an opportunity for them to you know, participate in ours. Um, so I'm just trying to expand yeah. the opportunities because we do have quite a few folks from, from Conway. Um, I would be more than happy to help with that. All right. So, I mean, if, if, if we were to, to Vote as a select like board. Exactly. Yeah, exactly. Th that we want to pursue this. I mean, we we would basically have to commit someone to work with you in order to deliver this proposal by September twenty first, right? To so yeah. Which I mean, they be, you can <laughs> email whatever you would like. We could work together. I mean, and if you're not comfortable of sharing that with with us, I mean, I'm more than happy to give you the link and, you know, you could apply for it yourselves if no, you would like as well. No, I think we're happy to have you <laughs> yeah. do this for us. I mean, and, and, and worst case scenario, say we get this grant for $100,000, we've said that we're going to do X, Y, and Z, we wind up doing half of it or only a quarter of it, we just return the money, basically. We say that, you know, for whatever reason, we, we didn't spend the full $100,000. So the grant, um, how it works is if we partner up, I have to provide um, really detailed ways of how we would be spending the funds. The majority of the ways would be um, the hybrid programming. So, you know, working with um, additional people. For example, we have a fiber arts class that people have been interested in. Um, we would work with the fiber arts instructor we would set up the time we could do it coexisting so meaning it would be virtually like we're doing now um as well as taking place in the same location at the center um in sunderland maybe you have time where you wanted to do it at your location so we could we could travel around and, and facilitate that but it would also cover the programming costs so meaning like the the yarn the delivery to to deliver the yarn, the knitting needles, et cetera, whatever the the project encompassed. Um, so even if if we don't spend it all, we could return it. But I could believe me, I, <laughs> I I learned how to spend it down. Okay, great. So, um, we could do we could definitely do that. Um, just so you just so your board is aware. Uh, this year, uh, since fiscal year 24 has started, I've already been awarded more than my annual budget um, in grant money. So our annual budget was around $151,000 and you know something, and I've received $154,000 in grants. So um, I'm really good at writing this. <laughs> I'm, I'm really good at spending it. Uh, because it, it only provides opportunity for our seniors you know it's not really about me um, I'm trying to because I do live in, in Deerfield I am trying to create a senior center that I would like to attend when I am at that age so um, and, and I think a lot of older adults are more tech savvy than people give them credit for and they do have interest if they learn how to use the system so I, I what I'm wondering is, we're talking about the grant, sure. yeah. but, but the other yeah. vote is on Conway joining the South County no, that's, Seniors. That's not up for a vote tonight. It's okay, okay, no. okay, good. That, that, no. That, 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 <laughs> that, that, requires, that, requires, that, that requires that requires serious consultation okay. and discussion okay, and good. contemplation. Good. Um, yes, and, and that also requires my board of oversight, which is not meeting tonight. Right. They're meeting. They're meeting Thursday, 
and that's not on the agenda. This is just about partnering for a particular grant. So I, I move that we, um, I mean, pending Pat's availability to work um, with you, Jennifer, before the grant deadline, um, I move that we join um, the Senior Center um, for the purpose of this grant partnership. Second. Well, I, I mean, if I can, the, the motion would be something closer to um, that we, because joining the Senior Center is right. well, no, uh, the, the, not we, really before us. We're Right. That we partner. Well, she said we're, yeah. Partner, yeah. We're part. Yeah. We partner um, with she okay. Senior Center okay. Grant. So yeah. Um, and uh, and then we have a motion and a second. Second. Um, all in favor? Aye. 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 So that's unanimous. And um, you know, grateful that you brought this opportunity forward. Um, we are we are right now like the town administration. We are just completely um, overwhelmed trying to get state federal and private help for our town and the people in it from this storm um, we would not have been able to do this application probably within the time constraints that we are faced with so um i, I you know and I, I i'm hopeful that 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 we'll be able to find some good uses for it i think you know just 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 for my own neighbor that does not have my own uh, neighbors who are seniors that do not have a working computer um, and who I go over once a week to, so that they can use my computer, um, they really would like a digital device. And um, so there's one that I know will say yes. Um, <laughs> uh, so, I mean, but, but that, to, to them, that, that will be a life-changing thing. That will be huge. And, um, and, and I think there's others that are similarly situated. There's, people that I know that just do not respond, that will not ask for help, but um, but want it. And then there are people like the two members of the Council on Aging who do not have any digital equipment and don't want any. <laughs> yes, and I, I, you know, I know somebody, I know somebody that thinks she's involved with the Council of Aging that still refers to computers as infernal electric machines. <laughs> and, um, <laughs> And I don't think she's ever going to even know where the, you know, by by choice she will not ever learn where the power button is on a computer. Um, but <laughs> but I think let alone use one. Yeah, you know what I'm talking about. Um, yes, I yeah, do. It, uh, I'm happy to help at all if if necessary. So the one thing so. that I would ask is a letter of support or you know solidifying that we're working together on this project because I do have to supply that with the grant application. Yeah, well, well. I'm sure you have something that we could crib from too, right? <laughs> <laughs> I can totally create one and send it over probably oh, no, no, no. by the end of day tomorrow. No, I just, I didn't mean for you to do the say work. Yes, I just, say yes, say yes, say yes, yes okay. <laughs> um, uh, tomorrow's our pop-up food truck Wednesday and uh, in, in our flu clinic. And it's going to be a very busy day, so I won't. I don't know if I'll get to it tomorrow, um, but you know, I'm happy to work with with Pat. And if um, someone could email over her phone number, so maybe that way, so that way it doesn't get rejected or bounced back for the emails, um, that would be helpful. And um, you know, we, although we are not voting on joining the South. County Senior Center. If you would like to state your case about why you think it's a good idea to do so, we'll listen. I now. can do that I if mean, you want me to do that now. I don't want to take up all of your time. Um, I uh, think right now, you know, we're we're at the process of, um, as you all know, like you mentioned, Patricia, you don't have a senior center for yourself we don't have one either we're in the process you know we're renting two different locations and then we utilize other spaces in um you know Waitley that they have their old town hall for di different activities so we're coming up um at the end of our procurement cap for two locations and we're determining what we're going to move forward and do at that point um i think at this point I don't know how many active older adults you have within your community who you know who regularly participate. I've spoken with 
Hey Horseman many a time when he comes by our space, you know, he talks about the different lunches and the events you have going on and they sound like they're really well attended. Um, we are also working to figure out what we're going to do moving forward and I'm working on our five year strategic plan. Um, but I think that where Conway is situated, we do get, we do have 15 members that I know of. Um, there's quite a few that come almost every day that we're open um, and to majority of our events. So I think that it would be beneficial to work together um, and you know possibly um, collaborate and cre create a new um, IMA intermunicipal agreement and include wait, include Conway with the other three towns. Um, the other thing that we've recently received a grant for is transportation and, um, we're in the process of moving forward to getting an additional vehicle with the uh, MARTAP through DOT or MassDOT um, to apply for another wheelchair accessible van. Um, and I know that you, you all struggle with your area for transportation. I mean, obviously the rain and the roads are one thing, but you know, having regular transportation in that area is a whole nother. I think there could be a lot of great benefits of working together. Um, I think the seniors in your community, you know, already come down to our location. I'm not sure if they go to many other spaces available in that area. From my understanding, there's not a lot of active centers in certain areas. Um, and, you know, getting, getting folks to attend. But in the year I've been on board, it'll be a year and seven or eight months at this point, maybe even a year and nine months, um, the end of January 22. We've increased membership by 164 people in the short time that I've been here. And um, it's amazing. We have over 400 regular members who attend, um, you know, at least once a month, if not more frequent. We have been able to really build a welcoming center, you know, within the community. Um, and I would be great, be open and welcoming the folks from Conway. All right, so um, there's a lot to doing all, something like this. And yeah. um, we need to talk to all of the stakeholders, um, which is sort of a, I don't like that word. So, so corporate speak, but um, <laughs> but um, just uh, uh, you know, but but um, you know, I do I do want to explore just explore p the, what the possibilities could look like in greater well, sure. in South County. Yeah, yeah. Well, we had a select board meeting about that, and you heard our side of it. That was Which then. is our reluctance to give up our grant money from the state uh, because it would mean the end of our foot care program. It would mean the end of any programming within Conway. Actually, How would that be so? Because one of the things I think is really essential um, that I've really implemented here is, uh, for example, we have three towns that are part of our, our, CO, our, our group. And it's been really important to reiterate that we have, you know, the three towns. So I've made sure we had our annual picnic in Waitley. We had our informational fair this year in Sunderland. We have regular programming in Deerfield. So it's it's important to have things in all three communities. So if, if Conway were to join in the fold, um, you would have events in Conway. They would not just be centrally located where we are. It would definitely be circular. Um, so you could continue to do your foot program there and things like that. And that money, even if the money is came into one, like for example, Deerfield is the fiduciary for the three towns through the IMA that we currently have, um, that program would still exist, especially if it's really popular. Like our foot clinic that we have um, is located in Deerfield at the town hall the first Thursday of every month, but that doesn't mean that there couldn't be a second clinic where, you know, people from Conway or maybe people from Deerfield um, or Waitley, you know, can't fit that time, depending on when yours is and 
making it open for everyone. Um, so we're really open to that mindset, you know, of being within the three communities that we're in now. So adding Conway would just be, you know, adding a fourth to the mix and giving us a new location, you know, to have different events in. We'll talk about this. We'll yeah. talk about this. And, yeah. um, and, and well, thank you for your sure, time. Sure. I don't want to, you sure. know, um, I don't want to keep everyone for that purpose. I know you have other things to talk about, but um, I'm more than happy to come back at any point in the future. Sorry, my intent was to be there in person tonight, but something came up where I was unable to, so I was grateful for the Zoom opportunity. Um, but, you know, Patricia will be in touch about the grant opportunity working together and I will leave the other discussion for you folks. Okay, thank you, Jennifer. Thank you very much, Jennifer. Yes, thank you. Thanks. And uh, thanks for joining us. Thank you. Thank you, Patricia. Thank you. <laughs> we'll talk. Yeah. 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 <laughs> um, so, if it's okay with everybody, would like also like to skip around the new bit, uh, the new business to um, for the for the procurement procurement of public works construction services agreement between the Franklin Regional Council of Governments and the Town of Conway for the Poland Road Bridge Repair Project. And uh, we, we have Ron Sweet here to talk about that with us. Good evening. Hide in the corner. Not hide, but um, the Zoom can't see. Oh, yeah, the Zoom can the see Zoom half of you. Yep. They can see your knee. <laughs> <laughs> All righty. There you go. Uh, much better. So, uh, yeah, what do you have to say about this other than. All right, well, that's for. We have hired Gill Engineering to, well, the bridge report came back and said there was problems with the uh, bridge, number one, on North Poland Road, the one right next to 116. And they highly recommended I talk to an engineer about, so that things don't deteriorate worse. So we did, we talked to Gill, we hired them to, um, do the design work for the repairs. We've, everything's done, ready to go, but then now we have to put it out to bid. And unfortunately, doing things with Mass DOT has control over how you bid things for, even though it's our bridge, we have to do things their way. So. Because they're paying? No. What? No. We're paying for the repair. They have certain guidelines that we have to follow for the bidding. We have to. Um, so that's what this purpose of this using FERCOG for the to do the bid. Um, I believe it's somewhere around seven hundred and fifty dollars to use it, and it just simplifies everything. They've, they've been they were dealing with working with skill engineering and just makes life easier if they did it for us. Yeah, they're good at that. Yes. This is one thing that they are good at. You they cannot take that away from them. Very, very good at um. this. <coughs> so. so. We just need an agreement that you guys will let them continue with that or do the bidding prior the money is actually just coming out of my operating budget it's not a big dollar amount for the bridge hopefully but won't know until we get bids back um, it's a relatively simple project my bridge might have to be shut down for a few hours from what I understand but, um, it's kind of necessary to preserve the bridge basically what they're going to do is in case the steel beams with concrete to stop for the corrosion. 
And so, I mean, so this is seven hundred and fifty dollars to the procurement to Perkog for the procurement officer Correct. that they have, who's who's excellent. And for that, what they do, they receive the technical specifications and plans from the town and the engineer. They prepare a construction bid package per statute. They apply for mass dot three qualification of contractors. They research and compile the mailing list of contractors appropriate to the project. They do the advertising and the posting requirements. They disseminate the packages and plans from their website the office. They issue the addenda to the contracts, receive bids, open bids, prepare bids, assess bid responsiveness and completeness, provide a contract template, work with the town to issue contract, check on the insurance compliance, receive an they do a lot for that money. Yes, they do. And um, which I don't usually you won't usually hear me say things like that. Um, but in this instance I highly recommend doing this. That I would I would move that we, as a select board here tonight, sign this uh, procurement agreement with Perkog for the Poland and Road Bridge Repair Project. Mr. Strong, <laughs> I second that. All in favor? Aye. 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 It's unanimous. So I'm signing this now. I notice that the agreement does have the month of August in it, so we're going to need to someone's going to need to cross that out and put September because. Deficit spending still keeping in check. <laughs> What's that? Um, yes, he's doing an amazing yeah. job at that. <laughs> okay. You did a great job on uh, the road above my house. Well, it's just fixing the holes on the road. I'm roads. sure you're doing it everywhere. <laughs> Every one of them has them. Everyone in the neighborhood is amazing. Took thank, a while. Thank you for how hard you've been working. Yes. Yeah. Armstrong is here. So we are dancing around this agenda. Yeah. Just discussing the letter to the state legislatures on proposed DPU guidelines on municipal aggregations. My favorite topic. Well, mine too. Um, yeah, I'm not. I'm not sure who the right people are for you to write to. Yes, it could be Dadley and, and Hewlett. It could be Joe Comerford. I'm not sure. But uh, I mean, the problem is we're. We're dealing with the DPU, and so it's hard to know who's got leverage to deal with the DPU, but we can start with that. Uh, so I think all you guys know what the aggregation is. I mean, it's the Conway aggregation, uh, and, and I haven't thought about this issue enough to have a good handle on how to talk about it, how to talk about what's happening. Um, The, the, the aggregation is based upon some really great legislation that basically trusted select boards in, in a way the same way that the state trusts select boards and conservation commissions to run the local conservation issues within their town rather than have the state do it in a heavy-handed way. Well, this legislation allows select boards to form an aggregation to buy power for the people of their town and have a lot of control over, because uh, you know your town. How interested is your town in buying more green electricity? How interested is your town at uh, having it be as cheap as possible? Or, you know, I mean, the, the, there aren't a lot of levers that you have control over, but there are a few. Um, how many options products do you make available to your town? 
um, when you add renewable energy to the mix that you're purchasing, where does that come from? And right now, you know, I mean, you, we don't do this, but I believe right now you could say we really like uh, the Nexium plant down in southern Conway, and we're going to buy some renewable energy and have that be part of our renewable mix that we're going to purchase. Or, you know, uh, the hydro dam that we have up here. I don't know if it's possible to buy electricity from them, but you could say we're going to buy renewable energy from the, the dam that's in Conway. That, that, um, now, we, we don't do that, but uh, we do it in the more traditional way of buying, um, uh, uh, you know, buying class one renewable energy uh, on the market. Um, but, so, so, but, but one of the things that makes this program work, I believe, is that the select boards have had, and the select boards working with their broker, and it's really the broker who does the work, but you direct the broker on what the f what you think your town wants to do. And um, for various reasons, not exactly clear to me, but the DPU has decided, oh my God, there is a, there is a piece of the world that they are not heavily regulating. And so they have decided that you guys should not have control of all of these things and that they need to very thoroughly in great detail regulate everything there is about the aggregations. And so they want to change the rules, especially for new aggregations. Um, as an example, they, um, so they're going to create a template and it's going to define how the regulation works. Um, and I don't know, they don't even specify how they're going to transition from what we have today to what they want to do. Um, you can only have two products. One of the products has to be basic service like the utility offers. The other product can have some additional renewable energy in it. That renewable energy has to be from buying class one renewable. Um, no deviation from that. Um, and right now, our it's, and so when people move into the aggregation, they would move into basic service. The, 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 and, and, and we don't do that. I mean, we send out a postcard to say, what do you want? And almost unanimously in town, people wrote back and they said, we would like to buy additional renewable energy, but not have the price be higher than Eversource. And so our default product that you move into when somebody gets moved into the aggregation is to buy 25% more renewable energy than the law requires. And it's still cheaper than Eversource. Uh, so they want to undo those kinds of decisions so that right now we are able to make on what we believe is the wishes of our town. And, and Brookline probably has 50% more renewable. <coughs> more renewable. Um, and uh, this is a pro this is proposed well, legislation, right? This it's is not proposed, legislation. It's, it's, the it's, DPU it's, is free to make regulation yeah, we'll changes. Make, we'll make so it. they're just this isn't something. This is they're just going to do it. They just they just want to do it, and it's not clear how to oppose them. I mean, I don't know whether Moore Healy could do it. Um, uh, so there's really there's sort of two pieces, of it. and so one is to write something. And, you know, and I don't know whether you guys want to write something that says, we believe that the DPU should trust select boards or that, you know, I, I mean, there's about 200 and something aggregations now in the state, towns have aggregated. I have never heard one hint of a complaint about, about the aggregation law or the way people are treated by their broker or, or any of those things. You know, I mean, it's, it, it's, it's one of the few things in the state that's working really well. And all of a sudden, the DPU has decided, oh my god, we, we need to regulate this. Um, so, I mean, the DPU has commissioners that, they're, they're like, that's like the board, that are appointed by the governor. And <coughs> they, they, I mean, they have a huge professional staff, but they, that's how... The DPU decided to change the regulations around how clean wood has to be burned in order to qualify for wood for, for subsidies. And they were just going to do it. And they kept trying to find a way, and we kept trying to find a way to, oppose, to stop them, and they managed to break the rules and not put their plans in place long enough that we finally passed legislation that said they can't do it. 
Uh, that was, but that was the only way we were able to stop them. Yeah. I mean, the 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 DPU used to have Sam, DPU used to have an office of ratepayer advocate, and Dev Devin, the governor that ran for president like a little while ago. Oh, um, um, Patrick Duvall. Patrick Duvall got rid of that. <laughs> uh, that was that was the one thing I liked about the DPU. Uh, the the other thing, the, well, the the only other thing is that anybody doing business um, that's regulated by the DPU has to show all of their financials. And so, uh, so for instance, you can look up and you can see what profit EverSource makes. You can see what income EverSource generates from this state, because part of what DPU do, what you does is guarantee them a profit. It's all of their expenses plus seven percent or whatever. Ten percent. Ten percent now. Maybe ten and a half now. And and uh, you know and, and what, when we were first voting on at the concept of agri, you know, the very first time around, that was my concern that the broker did, does not have to divulge the income that the broker generates from these from the services that they provide. Um, I've since like realized that it's not that much. It's almost and, nothing. And, yeah. and um, but uh, you know, th that that was the only you know, a, a, like it, it is basically the brokers that function in this marketplace are just sort of like it's like one or two person offices operating out of a UPS, you know, whatever, or a you know, a, a <laughs> you know, a, yeah. a, a residential address. Yeah. Um, and that that always. Uh, you know, they, they tell you that those are the ones that you want to watch out for. To me, it's really the other way around. It's the ever sources of the world that are really the ones to watch out for. But um, so at the time yeah. we put through our aggregation, you have to fill out a whole plan, yeah. and then we put through an aggregation. Now in our case, we put through 13 plans, each town of our 13 towns having their own aggregation. We have 13 separate aggregations, um, and it took a year and a half to get the DPU to do that. And the time it was taking the DPU to approve these plans was growing. Yeah. And it's now about four years. And so the big complaint that the DPU is supposedly addressing is they want to streamline the process. And so, but instead of streamlining the process, they're keeping everything in place that they currently have to do, and they're adding a whole lot of new regulations. And we are going to be expected to change our aggregation to meet their new regulations. I think it's appalling. I mean, you know, this it's, it's something that works well. Everybody in town talks and says, oh, this is great. I mean, you know, I don't, no, nobody complains about it. So, I wonder. Yeah, there's so, a whole big consultant class that they yeah. take care of. So, uh, so, that, so our broker is looking to their towns, like us, to write a letter in support. And yes, write a letter of support to Natalie and Paul Mark, and I don't know, I don't know what, how, effective they can be, but we need to write a letter of support. Um, there's going to be hearings, there's going to be one hearing where, where people can submit things, and so I think Conway should submit something, you know, to the DPU, their views of these regulation changes. Um, the other piece of this is there is a, a state senator who has put forth some a, a, a piece of legislation that would sort of make it illegal for the DPU to do what they're doing. And so, and that doesn't have, that's not what I'm here to talk about today, but I think that when that, you know, when there's gonna be a hearing on that, the town of Conway might wanna write a letter in support of that. And I've written a letter to Natalie saying, Natalie, you should sign this legislation. You know, you should sponsor it or sign on. Um, plus the, the, um, sorry. I, it's not contractor, but our broker, broker. is yeah. going to be also um, providing a pretty detailed letter themselves. Which well, well it, if the I, town I think wishes you said, or to somebody reference. said, send me some bullet points. So I've got right. four pages of bullet points, which I'm really trying to, you know, I don't know that they would mean a whole lot, you know. Uh, uh, so uh, is this what the broker provided? Yeah, and and and. Uh, and he said, but don't give them to the board. He doesn't want to distribute them. He doesn't know if, you know, his lawyer wrote them, you know. <laughs> right, but once they, once they, yet. right, once they produce it, right. they, they were going to forward it to yeah. us so that yeah. we could reference it in a letter from the select Yes, 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 yes. 
because it, that letter will be much more detailed. Yeah. You know. So Veronique just asked me, can I come in and talk mm -hmm. to you about what's yeah. going on? So this is the issue. So mm -hmm. maybe in two weeks or something, I don't know, in the next two weeks we could write a letter uh, that, kind of, that you guys could sign. Uh, I do agree that what we have now works for us. Mm -hmm. I do agree with that. Uh, um, there's a lot of speculation over why are they doing this. Um, I think there are some people who aren't aggregated, who are upset that they're the ones who had to pay the ever source prices for electricity over the last six months while we were paying nine cents. Um, and, you know, I mean, and to me that the problem is they should be changing the rules under which Eversource bids for their electricity. Uh, we have, you know, we can, we just go out to bid for our electricity, whereas they have a lot of rules on how they have to do it. Uh, but I don't view that as the problem of the aggregation. Yeah. You, you know, uh, it, it, it's a problem, you know, it, it's an Eversource problem. They should be working on this. And right now there's probably, I wonder if there's 20 towns that don't have municipal light plants. So they make their own or buy their own electricity under very different laws than the aggregation. Uh, towns that are not municipal light plants that have not aggregated, very few. So we've gone through almost every town that's not a municipal light plant aggregating under this really great law and suddenly the DPU has decided, oh my God, we got to carefully regulate this. So it's terrible. Uh, you know, follow the money. It's <laughs> no. Follow the money. If, if ever source slash the national grid, I mean, it's the same. They're the same. If, uh, if they're huge. And if they want it done, yeah, uh, I'm not telling you that the Eversource is behind this, but, you know. Yeah, uh, <laughs> I would, right. I, I wager they are. Because um, they have an ability to affect rulemaking in ways that we don't. So, anyway, so that's, yeah. that's all I'm here to talk about. And so uh, I'll work with, with Veronique and we'll try to write a letter. And okay. two weeks from now, you guys can sign it. And I think that was enough time, right? Yes, <coughs> yes, because we laid out what our yeah. what our select board meeting schedules were. Yeah, right, right, to right. make right. sure that, yeah. yeah. Nice to see you guys, though. There's always something terrible to talk about. <laughs> there is. This was nothing. This was, this wasn't that terrible. Um, thank you, Bob. Thank you, Bob. Thank you. All right. Thank you. Um, so let's just go down the new business. Uh, uh, Mark Galahan to Parks and Rec for a term ending June 30th, 2026. This was Jan Warner that put this person forward. I do not know him or of him. Does anybody? No, but I can but, trust Jan. Yeah. <laughs> so I'll move. I'll move to vote to appoint Mark Galahan to Parks and Rec committee for a term ending June 30th, 2026. Excuse me, Phil. Yeah. I don't want to interrupt, but Mark is the postman that just retired. Oh, that's right. Oh, oh. He delivered oh. your mail for That's, it, that's his years. last name? That's, okay. Yeah. I didn't know that was his last <laughs> name. Mark is wonderful. I love Mark. Uh, uh, <laughs> what is it, Jiffy the dog? Yes, of yes. course. Yes. Jiffy. Jiffy's getting up there in so age So we all two. know Jiffy, but not Mark. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Yes. <laughs> Thank you, Lori. <laughs> I didn't know that. I didn't know his last name. Sorry, Mark. Gosh. Oh, he would be horrified hear what I just said about that. Okay. Um, yes, I highly recommend Mark Gullin. Um, uh, a second. That all right. Motion. All in favor? Aye. 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 It's unanimous. Thank you. Thank you for that clarification, Lori. Um, so the, sign, the letter to Natalie Blaze and Paul Mark, is that what we're talking about, the letter to Dawn Brantley? Are those two different Yes, letters? no, that's the same one. My apologies. Yeah, it's okay. copied to them, but it's actually two Don Okay. Brady. So. And there's another one, just so you know, we have two in front of us. What? Three okay. copies. Oh. Three, three versions. What? Why are there three different versions? Well, because there's the, my original, Phil's edits, oh. and Chris's edits. Well, how do I know which one? What? <laughs> I only have one. How do I know which one I'm looking at? <laughs> Where would I never saw Chris's edits? It's only yours. Like with some. That's it, this I right just here. Took yours that's his. And just changed a little bit. 
Well, yeah, that's generally what edit. <laughs> yeah, that's kind of what I expected when you said there'd be edit. I, um, I didn't add. I subtracted. Um, yes. You added by subtract. Exactly. Well, I I read your original and I read this one. I honestly couldn't tell that much of a difference. That was the whole idea. I I I I I I, I, I really held back. And yet, it was still probably too strong of a cup of coffee for some. Uh, my only um, my only edit was that it's actually the month of July 2023, not 2024. Oh, yeah, good, good edit. Where was that? That was on the last page. We note that the National Weather Service designated comment, the rainiest community in North America for the month of July 2024. Oh, 2020? Yep. Did not see that. Good job. Good yeah, good thank job. you. <laughs> Oh, I wasn't in mine. Okay, gotcha. Okay. All right, I see Chris. I, I see Chris did break out the this, this thesaurus here. <laughs> <laughs> and, and let me know that I, I, I did confirm I got it wrong. It's not Patrick Duvall. It's Duvall Patrick. Yeah. <laughs> Sorry. You're right. <laughs> Gone and forgotten. I know, right? Okay, so July 2020. Yeah, okay, I like, so I just read through Chris's edit of my edit, <laughs> and my edit was of Veronique's edit, and I think uh, all together, we, it's <laughs> it's a, ready to go. This, yeah. I, I um, with the edit, edit with, with your edit, with your <laughs> correct um, year edit. Yeah, oh yes, came. yes, exactly. <laughs> yeah, I just realized, though, that for some reason on your original, there were two C, it, this is not formatted properly to sign. Um, so I'm going to have to... Actually, Chris, we, we do want this. This sort of really needs to go up. The whole thing needs to be yeah. reformatted. Yeah. Um, yeah um, but so two pages, back to back. Yeah, it can be on two. Yeah, on one page. I, I, I thought it was great. Um, it was to the point. Um, and, you know, and, actual and action items that we've asked them to, you know. I, I think there's enough rough in there to show our major disappointment and um, their decision or lack thereof. Yeah, and um, I, to be honest, um, uh, Veronique and I had a conversation with Natalie Blay about the decision about Director Brantley's letter to us describing the decision, and um, Natalie did state that she met with Director Brantley her and Paul Mark did meet with Director Brantley to talk about this. You know, and again, you know, one of our critiques was that uh, Director Brantley did not, you know, made all of these factual determinations without ever picking up the phone and checking with us, you know, giving us an opportunity to help her to help us. Mm -hmm. And actually our state rep and our state senator kind of did the same thing. I mean, they, they met with Director Brantley without contacting us and without giving us a chance to really, and, and I just nobody thinks about that. And I'm like, there's you know only a few towns affected. It would not have been hard. We really, the the uh, you know that being said, I think Natalie is like a hundred percent like on our side and like was pushing, was pushing for us. Um, uh, but. Uh, you know, but, but basically, what what I had what I had asked in in the letter was that they reverse their decision, that that they you know rescind the declination and decide to work with us and fine tune the application and submit the de disaster declaration request to FEMA, and that if they're unable or unwilling to do that, they they just respond to the concerns that we address just. Because we we've never had the opportunity to interact with them as a town, mm -hmm. and um, so that's um, you know we'll see where this gets us. Worst they're going to do is say no, but guess what? They already said no. Um, <laughs> so uh, you know. <laughs> well, it's worth a try. Yeah, yeah, and you know I I I was going to put language in here. 
requesting a resignation, requesting, you know, an announcing a petition drive in town for to try to get the person terminated, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. Decided that Probably, that was yeah. a little bit mean. Um, not going to say dereliction of duty, but <laughs> I guess I just did. <laughs> I mean, it's it's really like, what it comes down to. It was a dereliction of duty. It was their responsibility to at least put forth an effort. Well, I think it's going to be really interesting to see what kind of support Leminster has, because Leminster had a massive flood event that's comparable, comparable to what we experienced, and um, I think that will just be very yeah. telling. They have voters. They get that. yeah. That's that's my whole thing. Like we're too that, small. It, well, we're too small, and it's hard to it's hard to look at you know the, because it was just us in Deerfield. We just are too insignificant to help, and that's how I feel. That's what it feels like when you look at their letter declining, the, at, at Director Brantley's letter declining to make the application. It reads like someone coming up with reasons not to help. Yeah. And, um, you know, and I guarantee you, Leminster does not get a letter like that, with that tone, with that just sort of, you know, be, because they have votes. They can, they're, they could by themselves be determinative of a statewide election. Us, they don't need a single vote in our county to get elected statewide. And we're just a bad political play to help. And that's just how it feels. It, like, yeah, I don't, like all this stuff about the storm. It just feels so much that we're just on our own. Like nobody's going to help, except for Mastot. Thank you, Mastot. You're the exception to the rule. But um, the rest of it just feels like it makes you want to call up Vermont and see if they're interested in taking another county as part of their state, because. <laughs> This one just doesn't treat us right. So, so, um, so I'm gonna make a motion that we sign the collaborative effort of all of us uh, letter when it is. But the cumulative one that that was after, just sent from Chris after, after Chris, it's but but <laughs> after Chris, but with Erica's correction as well. With a, oh yeah, with the FR yeah, So yeah. that 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 is the that is a cumulative right. total effort. All four. All okay. four. <laughs> um, I um, second that motion. I think you should sign and send. And all okay. in favor? Aye. 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 So I'll have that ready as you know tomorrow for down here for everybody to sign. All right. All right, and so that's good. Um, discussion regarding streetlights, Chris. Yes. I don't think we should have any. Yeah. <laughs> Discussion or streetlights? <laughs> streetlights. Um, or at, at least, um, I, th did you put these out? Um, they yeah, that, they, that, were, that they came, would be meeting that you weren't able to attend. Yeah, so right. that's why I put them. Yeah, it's great. Yeah, I mean, yeah. it basically explains in there. Um, but um, I, I know that some of us live on streets where there are streetlights that there's absolutely no need for them. Uh, I, on my street in general, I, I know of one or two actually that I don't understand why they're there, why we're paying money to keep them on when they're more of a nuisance than um, a safety uh, uh, precaution. Um, I think Phil had stated previously that some studies have come out saying that having streetlights can actually have an adverse uh, effect on crime and um, on, um, uh, on driving even. Uh, we do live in a community with a lot of seniors. I know that even with myself, I'm only, only 43, that streetlight, the glare from the streetlights really affects <laughs> how I drive. I, I did, it's true. <laughs> it's true. So, I don't know. I, ju I just thought it was a discussion that we should have because I know money is being spent on maintaining um, the streetlights and well, when paying for the it electricity. Was, it's three. What was it? It was close to. It was closer to four thousand dollars a month when we looked at those bills last month. I honestly don't know off the top of my head. 
Yeah. It was between three and four thousand a month that we paid for all the street lights, the electric that we paid for street lights, yes. which is which is crazy. Like, I mean, uh, you know, obviously any little bit of savings that we can accomplish helps, and I do think that this is a just like with our transfer station, an easy fix. <laughs> well, there. The one, there are different, the other thing is that there are different street lights in town. There are some that are a lot less annoying than others. Mm -hmm. um, there are some that are just massively bright. Um, and there are a lot that seem a lot cooler. And, you know, I was interested in all, all that material that you shared from the, because Shelburne just did, Yeah. Shel Shelburne did, yeah. they decided to do their, go their own way and yes. they put up shielding yeah. and, yes. um, to direct the light down, yeah, and of which out and up. So, and I was really interested in that mm -hmm. as well. I didn't know what that cost, whether that ended up saving anything, whether there's did they do that for all, whether there was some money, did they decide to just darken some? I mean, have they done it yet, or did they just decide to because they were gonna they they figured out what it was gonna cost and they were gonna write a grant, right? Right, so, I so I, yeah, and I've been emailing back and forth with um a member of their energy committee for quite a while yeah. about this. She's absolutely wonderful sharing all this information. Right. So they've given a presentation, but I don't believe, I, you know what, I'm not sure if they did say recently if they voted on that yet in Shelburne to go ahead with it. Um, and I know they were looking at replacing everything with LEDs and whether or not the town should take over actual ownership of the poles. That's all whole, of those things okay. go into right. the cost and trying to, you know, forecast long, long range. Well, their what finance the committee did a the cost savings estimate, which was pretty impressive, I thought. Or I don't know if that's the finance committee or if that's the the energy committee that did that, but um, yeah, eleven thousand per year, which is not insignificant. But then there was an upfront cost, right, to them taking over the poles and yes, and buying back or whatever they had to yeah. Yeah. buying new lights to replace the Eversource lights. So is this something that we could ask like the finance committee to to look into and is it something that we would have to ultimately like is, is are they taking this to town meeting in shelter falls i'm not sure but one of the things i would say is that we do have a new sustainability committee that's taken over the role of the energy committee and i would think that would probably be the first place to do that yeah i mean I, what i'd like to you know when I have, I have been discussing this issue for a while now with people that I encounter, and there are some people that really like their street lights. You can't imagine, especially the one right in front of their house. They you can you can show them the study that show, that says, you know, burglaries and uh, robberies, whatever, and break-ins of cars like dramatically increase. They they basically don't take place in rural areas without there being a street light right there so that they can see, because. Mm -hmm. It turns out that walking around with just a flashlight shining it into things is really suspicious at night. <laughs> yeah. But just walking around, looking into places because street light gives you plenty of light to do it, you can just walk around and not attract any suspicion whatsoever. So, you know, it, it, it makes common sense. It's common sense that street lights increase um, burglaries and robberies. Um, but, uh, yeah, and what? even if we keep them, there's a way to reduce the cost. And if the um, energy committee of Shelburne already basically did all the work, and um, and has all the numbers there, I, I think that's a pretty easy ask to have our new committee uh, reach out to them and uh, come up with figures for us. What is the process for like have, like say you really did want to get a light taken down? On it's your an street. it's just an account with EverSource. You can just call them up and, and say, say we don't want that. Yeah, so, it's, it's, so close that so, account. So where the where the poles are is entirely up to like us in town. I mean, if if we decided we wanted a new one somewhere, we would call EverSource and say we want you to put an extra light. Right? I believe so. The only thing I was not sure about, I just haven't researched it 
is if there's anything that the state has to say on 116 about placement. I have no idea. Yeah, it may just be all local, yeah. it, but because the majority of them are on 116, I just didn't know. There's I, there's a whole lot that aren't on 116. I mean, I'd be curious, like, if anyone's ever done an inventory and assessment to determine, like, do we, like, maybe we're ready, maybe you're right, maybe you don't need that bowl in front yeah. of your house. And so, and what's the process for taking that down? I, oh, I just made the assumption that anything on 116 is owned by the state. But if it's but so was, oh are you are you talking about one on one sixteen or one actually on no Orchard I'm talking street? about one on my street yeah but I the, when we're talking about one sixteen I just made that assumption but yeah I don't think so no um, I'd have those to ask all Ron, on but the I bill. would think those all are the ones on Main Street all were on the town bill oh jeez yeah. yeah I mean yeah I think we should look at all of them mm -hmm. have a map showing yeah. the placements of each one how close they are to residents. What kind of bulbs are in each one? Since right. it sounds like there's different lights. Yeah, there there could be. Yeah, because I know there's a big push to go to LED, but there's, uh, yeah. I can get all the specifics from Ron. I know he has right. all this information. Yeah, I'd be curious to see it. So, and I know at some point I had asked Eversource to send me how much it would cost to switch to LED, but that was a year or so ago, so. But I can work with the Sustainability Committee and ask them if they're willing to take it on. They're meeting on the 18th, so. Yeah, that'd be great. And we don't, you know, what's what's the what's the best salute? Mm -hmm. You know, I, my guess is that there's a lot of people that live in front of it, that live, you know, right next to the, a street like this, would like it either disconnected or shielded in some way. That, um, I'd love mine gone. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, well, it, helps, it helps wildlife, you can see the stars better. And that's a big thing now. Yeah. said in Hadley, it's the, it's, the, it's the tax collector who controls the, did you, did you catch that? That's that like controlled by an app on someone's phone. Oh yes, oh, yeah. yes, it's right, yes. the tax collector who dims yeah, yeah, yeah. the street. Just, yeah. Yeah, it's like, that's, yeah. If we could dim them, that'd <laughs> yeah. be great too. That's a yeah. whole, because once you get past 10 o'clock, 11 o'clock at night, there's just no traffic, even yeah. on like 116. Right. right. And uh, it just doesn't make sense to have those things burning brightly through the night. Uh, but yes, yeah, so, so, you know, okay. so we're all in agreement to see, we'll see what the Sustainability Committee can do with this. Correct. Yeah. All right. Okay. We need a motion and a vote. Okay. Um, We did the procurement for the uh, the MVP contract with GZA and Burcott. Yes. So these are, you know, we, yay, Conway got the grant for MVP. But, of course, the work is all being done by, um, one, by the FERCOG and two, by the engineering firm GZA, who's really doing the bulk of the data collection and, and the bulk of the work there. And FERCOG's doing a lot of help with the... Um, outreach, etc. So, um, these are just the formal contracts that need to be signed so that we can then move forward with. Oh, they're all on the back there. Everything's signed. Okay. Yeah, that's not a. Yeah. They're on the back table. Okay. Don't do that. Oh. Well, we already voted to move forward with this. So that's, this is just the signing. It's just a formality, right? Or did we? Well, I mean, they are contracts, so yeah. the select board needs to. Okay. Yeah. I don't think we saw the GZA one. I don't think we voted. I know. Here oh, I don't think you voted on the first public. Yeah. yeah. You haven't voted on either because I just got them. Yeah. So, and you know, I mean, I went through them and we have a, um, a wonderful detailed, normally I print this on an 11 by 17 because this is what the actual budget grant looks like with the state. Um, and so the total of the grant that we were awarded was 300, uh, 279 of which 45 we match so the total is 324,000 because if you look at these two and you add them up you're going to say that's more than the 279 the state said we got and that's why because we have a match so in case anybody looks at the math and thinks you know but anyway so so yes I mean in reviewing these two um, basically they they're all they've all taken on the different tasks and subtasks in each of the sections and and time is of the essence because we had to put a two-year grant into one year. <laughs> so we need to get started like immediately um, on this project. Mm -hmm. And if anybody's listening at home, we're definitely going to need a lot of volunteers for that as well. So if anybody wants to be involved in the 
Municipal Vulnerability Pro uh, Preparedness Project. We welcome it. Okay. And tell me, just yes, so, so the the thing about the, this, the, so this is, you know, the, the, the we we just talked about the procurement contract for a bridge that was seven hundred and fifty dollars to to FERCOG. This is this is eighty three thousand to FERCOG mm -hmm. and two hundred and thirty five thousand six hundred and fifty dollars to GZA. Correct. And those are substantial payments. Um, All being paid for by the by, state. Yeah. That is correct. Um, Except for our match. Yes, which which was CPA money. Correct. And it's already been voted. it's already been voted and okay. taken, accounted for, and taken. Mm -hmm. Yep. Whatever. So, but um, <sighs> yeah. Well, it's not like the town could do any of this work on its own. No, I mean. <laughs> Yeah. You know, and, and so this is this is to gather data basically for hydrologic hydraulic models of the South River, Pumpkin Hollow Brook tributary to evaluate flood impacts within County Center, to develop and evaluate flood mitigation strategies. Um, we're also going to get a town dinner out of the deal. Oh well, there's several educational pieces, yes. but that's one of the things we have to hurry along with because. Yes. We're trying to put together what, we're, what we call dinner on Main Street. Yes. Um, and we we want to do that. Well, yes, it's in the contract. Good. <laughs> and FERCOG is taking the lead on this. But Good. You know, yes. So not everybody was super enthused about it when we last spoke. Oh, really? Oh, you didn't know that. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Um, anyway, yes, so we're going to do that. We're also going to have an educational um, meeting hopefully at the Historical Society, which will include Asheville. So the idea is this project, we wanted to include Asheville because the South River starts there and, you know, and it's, it's basically Asheville and Conway. So anything that happens along the South River just makes sense to include both communities in the education part of it. So there will be some preliminary meetings like at the Historical Society where we will have speakers that talk about the evolution of the South River and um, Historical Society already has that South River Walk um, brochure, so um, just to get people sort of up to speed and also up to speed on all the work that's been done before by um, the folks like um, Janet Shays, Michelle Turi, Joe Strogowski, you know, Friends of the South River, all these people who have worked on this for a decade already to explain all the projects that they've been involved with and sort of get everybody up to speed and say, okay, now this is where we're going forward from here. So I'm very much looking forward to it. <laughs> uh, we're going to have a dinner on Main Street. <laughs> yeah. Uh, for the whole town, which is kind of like free. Like, yeah. 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 So. Logistics of, of are going to be interesting because we haven't figured out yet, okay, it might have to be a rain date and how do we deal with that because, yeah, but we'll get there. Phil has a huge house. So did Erica make a motion to sign these? I did. Was there a second? Second. All in favor? Aye. 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 It's unanimous. Thank you. And these are not the copies to sign? No, all the signature stuff is on the back there. Yep. I can move them up here now since we yeah. Oh, thanks. I think I'm going to start and go down. All right. Um, do we have anything we want to add to the any of the to the unfinished business, the discussions of all of the issues around the flood? The late, which is the latest state or federal agency to deny us assistance? Well, I will say that you do, I believe, have in your packet the letter from um, Walter Goodrich, our tree warden, just speaking his letter to the select board about the blockage of the trees on our newly acquired property. Like the 
this one is only for Yeah. Um, Yeah, so the, 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 what we voted on, I guess that was last meeting, the $4,000, no, it was like two meetings ago, for the contract um, to do the removal of the obstacles in the South River is what you're talking about. Oh, yes, yeah. the 4300 with Pantermelt, yes. yes. So that's still on hold as we await the MISA review. And the issue is the endangered species that are in the river and the Commonwealth of Massachusetts general reluctance to allow towns or cities or anybody to bring a tracked piece of equipment into a river, into a named river, in the presence of endangered species. Um, so there are reasons why that is the best, why we feel that that's the best way to deal with this situation that that particular section of the river has a good gravel bottom and um, and the alternatives that they want us to do to take a look at just are not feasible you can't just use a come along and drag those things up yeah, and there's electric power lines all along the one side you could you can't just grab it from the road or from the river bank there's a lot of reasons why the the uh, the plan that Pantermel and us have come up with is the best plan for us, but um, you, you you may remember, I guess it was Hurricane Irene when the town of Hawley thought they had, well they said they thought they had permission from the state to take a piece of tracked equipment into the Chickley River, and it, it came very close to like having the select board getting marched out in the handcuffs. Um, it was, the, the state like went ballistic in, about that whole thing. The, um, just, you know, and I don't know whether it was, because I don't know the whole, that, that whole thing, but, 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 but basically taking a track hoe into a river is really hard to get permission to do in Massachusetts. So um, we're up, so, so far, all the correspondence I've seen is come up with a different plan, Conway. Um, but right. We haven't gotten an actual final determination or any order of conditions. And we were emailing back and forth today. I'm very much hoping to hear back tomorrow and know whether we can proceed. Be, because theoretically, you know, there are super expensive pieces of equipment that you can rent that have the ability to reach up and over power lines and like down right next to it and they probably would have to truck them in from Boston or whatever. We but should just add that to revise our initial damage assessment for the storm. Okay. Yeah, <laughs> and, right. And then we'll read that. Right. Of course, we don't eventual. know what we're going to get. So, <laughs> right. um, yeah. So, and, and I did actually speak with Nicholas Miller, who is the um, geofluvial morphologist with, yeah. well, he's with GZ and he's done turtle sweeps before. And so, and he went to visit the site today to look at it and just get a better sense. But he's already said he would do that for us for this project, and I've let Misa know. So we're just waiting to hear back and see, you know, so that he could do the, the sweep and make sure that there are no turtles as they're doing the project. And then hopefully that will be okay. Especially because we don't know what's going on with Hurricane Lee, and if it changes course at all. Right. Of course it will. <laughs> it's going to change course and it's going to head right for Conway and no one else is going to get affected at all because this is 2023 and it's our lot. That's what happens. And and then we get to see all the letters that come in saying, sorry Conway, we won't help you. It's, 
Except for DMT. Except for DMT. <laughs> yes. Yes. Um, but yeah, there, so there was that. There was also, we were, um, we, yeah, who, who else didn't help us? Um, so yeah, Mima, Mima, <laughs> Mima. Mima, yeah, Mima, Mima of course. Uh, the, whether the, the, we're still waiting on inter legislation being introduced for a special for, for a supplemental appropriation for the town, um, uh, my take on it from a conversation with our legislators, we're not going to be happy with it even if we get it. So, because um, we're not going to be made whole. Um, Maybe, I, you know, prove me wrong. So I hope they do. I will eat my words. But, um, and then the USDA EWP program, um, we did receive an email from somebody in that program saying they weren't going to help us at all. Um, but that person ended up not, um, I, we, we, we immediately called complaining about that. And the complaints were heard, um, maybe. Uh, but at any rate, um, there, the person that we met with before and toured Conway was not an engineer. She was a new hire that was like a community liaison um, or whatever. I don't know what her title was, but she was not an engineer. Turns out that within that agency, the engineers make the call. And we do have a commitment now from the district engineer with the district conservation officer, who the two of them make the decisions. Um, and I did speak with the engineer today. He was, seemed like a very nice fellow. And they're coming out to Conway, and we're assembling a team to show them uh, our top five horror spots. Um, and in the hopes that they'll say yes to something. Because they're, the they're, they're the only group, group so far that I've seen that indicates a willingness to work on private property. Um, that that the terms of their grants and their what they do will allow them to go on private property. The town has to get all the permissions, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera, but theoretically, they can do that. What they don't do, though, even though it's the um, water said something something program, they don't do. They don't move water. They don't do streams. They don't. They they don't work with water. Um, what the my understanding is, they they do engineering, and their engineering solutions involve swales and like the creation of ditches. But they won't modify like existing any water at all. So, um, but I, all all I know is we need help. So keep on trying and um, it is time consuming that's the worst thing when you put on all, all this time and you still get no could have just saved us um, so the energy improvement project which will that's a piece of mail there somewhere oh I think that's it um, yeah so wonderful um, this, this isn't us. This does not look like it's Conway. It's between where Belchertown, Amherst, Leverett? Or no, that's the Greenfield, 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 Deerfield. We're here. It's along the Deerfield River, so I guess they do have that line along the Deerfield River, um, I've, which I thought they'd been working on. That's the, the horrendous traffic that they've been causing all through town. I thought that was them, but apparently they're going to be doing it a different. Well, yeah, because whatever they do, we pay for it at a raise plus 10%, so yeah, they'll keep working on these projects as long as DPU will let them. But this is another massive project. That, Replacing existing steel double circuit lattice structures, 69 kilovolt transmission lines with double circuit steel monopole structures, 
and transition lines designed to operate at 115 kilovolt. Basically, giant, giant construction that yeah. National Grid will be doing, along with, uh, yeah. yeah. So, so they'll be doing they'll be doing soil testing and surveys coming up, and then our favorite vegetation management crews. Uh, spraying whatever they're allowed to spray, which is, as we know, includes Roundup, uh, glyco glycophosphates, which are in the list of approved substances right now. That's a lattice tower. This is a monopole. It's basically what they're saying. Yes. So yes. Nice, nice arts, arts and crafts. <laughs> very good. Thank you. Um, yeah, theoretically, that should be aesthetically less awful. Yes. But um, but the amount of truck traffic and noise and dust that we all have to get through to get to that point might reduce that. Um, the, uh, Reed's Bridge Embankment, there's a uh, resident that, was, that felt that it was the state's property that was Oh, it's a town bridge. Yeah, the town bridge and the state, the uh, the state DOT responded that it is the private landowners, thing, not anybody else's, uh, that is deteriorating. But the Mass DF dot disagreed that there was any deterioration at all. Um, um, uh, town administrator update. Oh, sorry. <laughs> I thought we were. Just I read your last one. Yeah. You got off easy last week. <laughs> All right. Um, so we've been um, mostly doing sticker sales <laughs> since September first, um, and they've been going actually quite smoothly, really well. People have some questions. We've been giving out flyers saying that there's the public forum on Thursday. Um, and we've probably done about two thousand in sales so far. I I would guesstimate. Um, and then um, for this past couple of weeks, a large amount of my time has been stickers and MISA, the MISA review, trying to get to the bottom of that with the trees. Um, we did have a meeting to talk about um, the progress in setting the tax rate. It looks like, as you know, tonight's classification hearing didn't happen. so. Typically, you want it to happen at least by September 15th so that there's a couple of weeks so that we can get the bills out for October 1st for a November 1st payment. So obviously, it's going to be a little late um, again this year. That um, is a problem. I know. I know. It's not just a legal problem. It's just a fairness problem. Yeah. So, well, what happens is it's not like the amount of time is shortened. It's just it's later in the year. So. Um, and then um, I, Phyllis Crane has, um, and I have met, and she's going to be um, trying to help recruit a couple of other people to be on the personnel committee, which would be wonderful. So if anybody's watching and wants to join the personnel committee, please contact myself or Phyllis Crane. Um, and then, as you know, we had a planning meeting already to discuss the upcoming meal on Main Street um, for the MVP program. And then the Public Buildings Committee had met again with John Lyman to review a lot of, a lot more detail about what's going to be in this edition. And just make sure that, you know, everybody around the table was agreed about who needed what space and what kind of doors and windows and floors and lighting and all that. And a um, big topic of um, discussion was, it was what had been brought up when we had the public forum last year and the idea of creating storage in the upstairs um, of the new building. And so we've been running around with ideas for that and it looks like we're going to be able to make that happen and happen pretty nicely. So there, you know, we're looking at a permanent staircase in one area that will lead up into a nice big area. We've been trying to expand the area as much as possible because as we know, storage in town is at a premium. So, um, and I've already contacted um, but, but the issue there was the fumes from large vehicles. No, no this is the building with the offices. <laughs> and there's, yeah, there's no concerns right. about All that. Right. And the, yeah. Um, Will that storage help free up the storage in, or in town hall so we can open that up to 
that's the you know place. if it happens. I mean, we'll have to see how it works. But that's the idea, is that everybody's well aware that we need storage of a lot of documents. Mm -hmm. um, so, and to be honest with you, the amount of size of space, it looks like we'd have a lot of, it's mostly banker's boxes that we're storing, right? There's going to be a lot of room for those up there. So now, you know, of course, part of the concern is that this is going to be, you know, the police station, mm -hmm. you know, so it's not like any town employee can just run over there anytime and put stuff in there. There's going to be controls on that. But at least it would be nice to have that um, you know, available. And then um, I've already contacted Andrea Woods, just like with the contract you signed tonight, to do bid documents for this and hope to get that tour finalized within the next like six weeks. Okay. Thank you. Um, select board comments or concerns. Anybody? Um, well, we've gotten I've gotten plenty of complaints about some personnel uh, that I think we need to discuss at some point in time. Um, uh, you know, it wasn't one or two. I've gotten a litany of complaints about our transfer station. So <clears throat> at some point we, we need to discuss that. But um, my thought process is. No matter what, we're going to have to uh, have a survey at some point um, with the new program and how everything's run up there, how it's designed, uh, interactions with the employees, if um, residents have a firm grasp on what's being asked of them, what they can throw away, what they can't, um, how this program works. All of that, all encompassing. I think we should have a survey for. So I'll figure out how we can do that, maybe online. Uh, I know there's plenty of um, survey tools out there that we could use. So I'll do some research on that. There are. If you want to do a survey, which I think is great, just be aware that many people don't do online. We could put something in the currents. We talked about doing that before because okay. it gets delivered to every household. Sure. Um, and there might be a way that we can do the center of it that could be removed and mailed back, or you know, perforated. Something like that. Because I, well, I don't know about perforated. I don't. We're not. We're not high tech. We'll <laughs> <laughs> <Remove> it out. <laughs> but we can certainly explore it um, yeah. and see if that's, or we could just mail something separately to each household. That's another possibility. Only because so many people don't do online. Yeah. Um, so I guess uh, con or concerned comments, I don't know about, or announcements. Uh, Festival of the Hills sign-up sheet uh, is at Town Hall. Is town office. Town offices. Thank you. Can you can also volunteer at festivalofthehills.com. You can also do And um, there is this wonderful sign-up sheet that Mass Cultural Council helped to fund. Uh, you know, tell for teens, it's a great date activity. <laughs> for adults, it's fun and rewarding. For seniors, you can sit down while you help. <laughs> and and uh, if anybody's listening, don't wait. Uh, yeah. It's not like we only need a handful. Uh, currently, the projections about 120 volunteers are needed. So uh, please volunteer your time if you're able to. They need help Saturday, September 30th. They need help. Um, festival morning setup on the first from like seven to ten. They need help with kids activities and they need help with everything else. The info booth, Cafe Conway, cider tent, fried dough, merchandise parking, and trash and garbage. So um, yeah, everybody should help. Festival again is Sunday, October first. So we do have um, the very last one of our trash of palooza trash informational session yeah on, that is this thursday on you know on eagles football day oh, true. <laughs> <laughs> no, that, that game's not till eight o'clock nine o'clock seven o'clock what thursday seven o'clock when's our when's our per six o'clock we've got to get in and out of there <laughs> <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> 
All right. Yes, so, but it is Thursday. So this Thursday, um, all questions. Uh, there's a, we, a nice presentation about the changes being made at the transfer station and how they impact residents, and uh, good chance to ask questions and still affect. You know, you, we we can still change things midstream because there might be an idea out there that we haven't thought of. Um, and a lot of this is to be able to ask questions specifically about what's being rolled out for October 7th, i.e. what goes in the bag, why is it that we can't throw loose trash, how many bags, what size bags, what types of bags, what ty you exactly, yeah, yeah, all of that. yeah. yeah. and I've, I've already received a, th a thoughtful question, how will you be defining success? How will you be defining success? <laughs> oh, and, I mean, I know I'll, and, I'll, I'll define it. It's the tonnage, you know. I'm hoping it goes down um, as far as, you know, non-recyclables. And that, uh, you know, we're not spending so much of our budget on yeah, that's, trash. That to me so is... Those two is, things. That to me is, you know, do we save money? Because yeah. we're putting everybody to extra hassle it's a hassle for everybody concerned it's got to be saving money so uh, less trash less money and, uh, yeah but that's what we gotta that 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 to me is how i define success in this so but um the next select board meeting is monday september 25th 6 p.m at our usual location of the town hall and else. All right, so move to adjourn. Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. It's unanimous. Ooh.